Hey guys, so I have a super fun episode today and I cannot tell you how excited I am to introduce you guys to Tamara. She works with Godiva Chocolate and we've got a super, super cool and exciting episode. And guess what? We're not making anything sweet today with this chocolate. So first I wanna let Tamara talk a little bit about who she is and what she does. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about chocolate and how fun it is and versatile outside of just maybe some chocolate covered strawberries, right? Absolutely. So like she said, my name is Tamara. I am a boutique store manager for Godiva here in Houston. Um, I've been with the company for almost three years now. So it is so much fun. And like you said, I mean, I mean, I play in chocolate all day, every day, but there's so much more you can do with chocolate uh, oh, so much besides more. just as a sweet treat or, you know, most people think chocolate and wine or it's a dessert and cake and stuff. But like you said today, we're, we're going to play with it and we're going to play with savory it. Dishes, dishes. We are. We're going to do some savory dishes. We're going to do some alcoholic beverage with with the chocolate and people really kind of box themselves in with chocolate you think and don't get me wrong guys i love a good truffle i love some chocolate bark i yes. love all of those things they're amazing but why not take your meals to the next level why not surprise your friends with something they may never have had in their lives um and this dish right here is so festive as well um you're gonna be watching this in the month of may more than likely right and cinco de mayo's around the corner and this here is going to be a showstopper at your next party or get together with your friends. Um, both sections of it. It's, it's amazing. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the chocolate itself before we dive into the dish. So we've got some really um, cool products here and it's their Calais. Um, and they are little chocolate pellets. I guess would yes. be the best way I would so describe what, them. Yeah, this is what we use in store to dip our strawberries every day, what we make to melt down our handcrafted bark in store. Exactly. Um, and you can come in and ask for these and we can, you know, if you want to re replicate the dishes exactly. at home, you can come in, ask for them, we'll sell them to you. Um, I have a t four different varieties in store. We have a 72% dark chocolate, which we're using you today. today. Um, I have a 50%, I have milk chocolate and white, white chocolate, chocolate too, which we're using over here as well. Yes. So, so we're going to be using the, the super dark and the white chocolate. So the the thing about it, guys, is with the 72% um, cocoa, it's very bitter. It's not nearly as sweet as you guys would think. Um, and I know a lot of us normally in the stores, we think of normal dark chocolate, which is of the 50%. Right. Um, and that's what you get in a candy bar or something along those lines. The 72% is very... It's very tart, very bitter, has a little bit of acidity in it. And so this pairs really well in a lot of dishes. Um, and so you're going to see that here. And I'm going to go ahead and toss these back in the bag. Um, for just a second because we're going to use these. So first off, guys, we've got a slew of items today. We are making a chicken mole taco, and we're going to do it quickly. Um, or a version of quickly, let me say that, because mole, generally speaking, takes a long time to cultivate the flavors in the sauce. But we're going to do a little bit of a version of it that's a little bit quicker for you. That you can do at home in about an hour, but it is a set it and forget it. Once you put everything in the pot, you can kind of leave it there. You can go get dressed for your party. You can do whatever you need to do, and then it'll be ready in a little bit. So first off guys, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the stove so you can see how we start this. Okay guys, so we've got our pan over here preheated. I've got a small stock pot, but you can make this in large batches as well. Still takes about the same amount of time. So we're gonna get it started in our pan with about a tablespoon of olive oil. There we go. Now the first part, normally you would think you drop your chicken in there and you start. But instead, since we've got those Calais, we're gonna put those in first. And we've got about a half a cup and you can see it's already smoking. And it's going to cook really fast, so you've got to add all the ingredients pretty quickly. I'm going to start with those. And those will go in. You want to start stirring that for me, yeah, Tamara? absolutely. So we're going to get that stirring. So now we're going to add in our white sauce that we made earlier. So now what's all in that one? So our white sauce is the marinade that we made yesterday for our episode. And this is literally a hodgepodge of um, just oil, a little bit of cream, and then um, garlic and onion. So it gives it a lot of flavor really quickly. And then we're going to add some of our green sauce as well. This is one we made yesterday. So it has the jalapeno, the cilantro in there, yeah, all okay. of that fun flavor, and the oil as well. So we're going to add some of that in there. Uh-oh. Tim, you're going to hand me a spoon in there? Yeah. And I'll stir that for you. Here is a spoon. Perfect. Now you're going to see this bubble really quickly, guys, and you're going to feel maybe like it smells like it's burning. And that's not really the case. It just cooks very, very quickly. 
Um, it already smells so good. Because you have to work with it really fast and you can already start to smell all those other spices. Oh yeah. So Tamara, we're gonna throw in some chipotle pepper, guys, and you can get it in your can at your local grocery store. Um, and it has a lot of flavor to it. So just throw the whole thing in? Yeah, just dump it all in there. All right. Perfect, perfect. And now you can see it's starting to simmer a little bit slower. We're adding all those extra ingredients. So next we're gonna add the chicken stock, which is the last component of making our sauce super, super smooth and velvety. I'm gonna just keep stirring this guy. There we go. Now we've got everything integrated. Now we can kind of step away from it. And you see how quickly we put that together right here yeah, on camera? Yeah, no, so quick. So we've got all of that in there. So now we're just gonna season our chicken and then drop it in. And it's literally gonna simmer you guys for the next 45 minutes. And so what's all in this seasoning that we're about to put on the chicken? So this is our house blend. So this is our um, Latino seasoning that we use, our Hispanic seasoning. It has oregano, salt, pepper, um, garlic, and onions. So there's a little bit of cumin in there, but not very much. Okay. Um, and that's really because I like to add my cumin separately depending on what I'm cooking because different meals call for different seasonings. So we like to season that chicken pretty vigorously, especially because our sauce, even though it has a lot of complexity with fresh vegetables, it doesn't have any salts in it or seasonings. And we'll drop our chicken in. Once our chicken's in there, we'll roll it around a little bit so that way it can completely be submerged. So you should have enough liquid. And that was a cup of chicken stock. So you can kind of see this, guys. Um, and then I'm a little extra seasoning, so I'm going to drop a little bit in the sauce itself to make sure. And it's got a nice, smooth, dark color to it, rich and chocolatey. But it's going to have some spice from that chipotle pepper, too. It's not going to be overwhelming, though. It's going to be just a really nice kind of smoky heat. So we're going to let that simmer. And then we're going to go ahead and make our pico de gallo for the top of our tacos. Okay, guys. So we've got our pico de gallo that we're gonna start, but we're doing a little bit of a remix on this pico de gallo. We're doing a watermelon pico de gallo. And I know that might sound really weird, right? You're thinking watermelon, we've got chocolate in this taco. What is she doing? But I guarantee you, you'll love the flavor balance of this. So Tamara, you wanna go ahead and tell everybody what we're gonna put in here? Yep, so we have a little bit of sea salt. We have some onion, tomatoes, um, some cilantro. We have the watermelon, which is a little bit different than most, and then some fresh garlic we have that's gonna go in. And then we'll just top it off with a little lime juice as well, too. All right, so let's go ahead and start dumping everything in our bowl. All right, so I got some, the onion. I love like traditional pico de gallo, so this is kind of exciting with the watermelon. It'll be a little different. When it has a nice sweet element to it. And I don't know if you guys, because of course I've already told you guys, I'm real Southern. So have you ever had like salt on your watermelon before? <laughs> oh yeah, that's, I mean, that's the best way to eat it. Oh, right? Come on. As I get stuck in there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we'll just get it up. Come on. Well, so you know, at home, we don't put them in the little cute ramekins. We just dump it in there. Right. It's a little bit easier, but. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this lime up, guys. And you really only need about half of it for the amount of pico that we're making since we're doing miniature tacos. But of course, we'll create uh, the recipe that you'll be able to see and it'll be for a little bit larger of a volume. All right. All righty. Put that lime in there. It's got a nice acidity. And we'll sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. Let me use that dry hand so it doesn't stick to my life. Awesome. There we go. Add a little bit extra, guys. Being that overzealous looks, today. I'm like, that looks so good. Can't wait to try it. And so normally, instead of like the watermelon, guys, we would use the jalapeno. But our chicken has a lot of flavor. And the chipotle pepper, we want to let it kind of shine through in this particular taco. So I don't want to mask it by, with the jalapeno or any extra heat. So we're going to keep the pico itself really light, refreshing. And then the chicken, we're going to let it have its own spice and speak for itself. So we've got that ready. Now while we're waiting on our tortillas and our chicken to cook, we're going to go ahead and make that margarita. I can't wait. All right, so I know you've been waiting for this yes. margarita and so have I. So we've got our jigger full of ice already so that way we can go ahead and mix this up. So these are the white chocolate calais and they're a little bit smaller than the dark chocolate, but they're so cute and it's really tasty. I can't even tell you. Um, the, the sweetness of these, of course, comes through a lot more than they what do, you have definitely. in the dark. Um, but this is a perfect um, item for a drink because you want something sweet um, and fun to balance it out. And um, so we're gonna get started. 
The first thing, of course, we're using in our margarita is a little bit of sugar. So this is some bar simple syrup that we purchased, um, but you don't have to purchase simple syrup. You can just make it yourself at home and it's gonna be um, two parts water to one part sugar. So you'll put a cup of sugar in there, two cups of water, you'll let it boil and then it's ready to go if you wanna use it. But we're using this for convenience because we're pretty lazy, if you want me to be honest. That's why we're making 15 minute meals, right? I don't wanna work all the time. We're gonna open that up and pour it in. And so we're gonna use about a half an ounce. Because our chocolate is pretty sweet, we don't need too much sugar. Okay, well that makes sense though. So then the next part, the fun part, is the tequila. So I'm using a Milagro tequila today, but you can use whatever you like. This is a pretty medium shelf uh, tequila that I think most people enjoy. It's pretty smooth um, and it doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own, if that makes sense. So it melds really well in this. And we're gonna use, an, for two margaritas, we're gonna use two ounces and a half, two and a half ounces. Alrighty. Yeah, this will be perfect for Cinco de Mayo. Oh, it definitely will. Especially because we're adding the orange liqueur in there. So you got a, light, a nice balance with orange and chocolate if you guys like that combination. And so we're gonna add our triple sec in there, which is a little bit of orange liqueur. And that's just gonna be about a half an ounce. So we're also putting orange juice or? Yeah, so we're also gonna add some orange juice to this. Nice. It's gonna give it a nice color and a really nice flavor and a little bit sweeter than your nice lime. But if you don't mind cutting that lime for me. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the orange juice in, guys. And so she was telling me, which I did not realize, the bigger the lime, the sweeter it's gonna be too. It is. So that's really cool, I had no idea. Because if you've never seen a lime as big as my face. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge. It's definitely big. And this makes making margaritas a thousand times easier. And look how easy they squeeze in comparison to the little babies that you get at the grocery store. Um, but you definitely can find the large limes in there definitely around this time of year because it is about to be Cinco de Mayo and who doesn't want a fantastic margarita? But we're gonna use both halves of the lime because we wanna have a good, sweet balance in there and acidity with the lime and the tartness. There we go. And now we're gonna add in our pre-melted Calais. So we've already melted our white chocolate and they melt super easy in the microwave, guys, for about 30 seconds to one minute, depending on your microwave. So it's a little bit different. And I know you heard my dishwasher, guys, it's okay. <laughs> that tells you I don't really wash dishes, it's all right. So we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. So it might seem thick to you as I pour it in, but it's a lot smoother in the drink overall once it Mix is it. mixing. Exactly, exactly. So we're gonna go ahead and shake this up and then I'm gonna show you how it pours out, guys. All right, guys, so we're gonna shake this up a little bit and then once we shake it up, we're gonna pour it off. I went ahead and did some cute little chocolate covered strawberries using the white Calais so that way people can get a little idea of what's in there. And now we've got our drinks shaken and we're gonna pour it off in here. Now, if you want the ice, you can keep your ice in there, and if not, you don't have to. It's gonna be up to you. And you get the little bits of the chocolate floating around in there that are nice and cold, and it's so, really, so really good. tasty. And you see the orange juice gave it a gorgeous color. Now, we've got our chicken over there still cooking, guys, so don't forget we're about to eat these tacos and try these margaritas in just a second. I'm gonna chop it up, and I can't wait. Okay, so we've got our chicken ready. We've got our tortillas, our pico, our margaritas. I think we're all set to get this plated, guys. Oh my God, this smells so good in here right now. So I'm taking our chicken thighs that we used for our chicken mole, and I'm gonna go ahead and chop all of this up. So, and for some of you, you might think it's a little messy, but it's not the end of the world. And so the chicken mole kind of creates a crust on there, and it, so it gets you this really like double textured chicken. I you like get the crunch is so nice, like you just top in that. Because you get a nice moist chicken on the middle and you get crunch on the outside. So it's almost like, I don't want to say chocolate fried chicken because that sounds, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily sound good, but it kind of gives you that feel. I'm like, that's exactly what I thought of when you were going to say. I mean, it is the first thing that pops in your head, but you know, when you're trying to explain things to people, you try to make it sound a little better. But in this particular instance, I mean, like I said, you get that really nice skin on there. It's got crunch. It's got balance. Mmm. I cannot wait. And it's got this smokiness to it that um, you would get maybe from some like barbecue. It's got a nice smokiness to it. And that's a combination between the chilies and the chicken itself, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start filling our tacos. And I've got little baby shells, guys. I made them myself. And you can do this at home using corn tortillas and then using um, like a little stencil to make a circle. So we fill that. I like to fill my tacos. So oh, yeah. if it's not overflowing, it's not right. And then I'll give that to you to okay. put the pico on there. 
This looks so good. Try to get a little bit of all of that on there. Yes, there we go. It's gonna be perfect. All righty. Look how bright and colorful those are. It's got a lot of tone to it. So when your friends see this, they're gonna like, they're gonna hit you with that one. Oh my gosh, what is this? Right? Oh, it looks so pretty. Go ahead and put them on a cute little platter. Here's the last one. We got the last one. Perfect. There we go. Uh oh, I dropped all my pico out of that one, and then uh -oh. that one fell. Y'all, I'm making a horrible mess today. That is a okay. Because it's gonna taste good. That's really all that matters like, to me, right? It's still gonna taste good. But we're gonna just pile that back in there. I've got some cute little limes we'll put on there to kind of hold them up. And we're ready to enjoy. So let's grab those margaritas and try these tacos. Okay, so let's dig in, Tamara. Yes. I can't wait to eat these tacos. They look so good. Here you go. Awesome. Give you one, and I'm gonna take one. Mm. I'm gonna lose my pico. <laughs> that is so good. You do, you get so much smokiness and spice from the chicken. But I'm definitely gonna have to make this watermelon pico at home for something different. It's very, it's very light, very refreshing. And you know what's nice about the mole, the, the heat comes in a little bit later. It kind of creeps up. But this is really good too. I mean, we didn't do any salsa for this, but you more than likely can. Um, and then I like to put a little lime on mine because it adds a little extra wetness to the meat. Um, but you can also keep all that sauce that you cooked that mole in and you can drizzle it on there. And I like to do that too, or oh, dip it really in. Good. Yeah. It's always super, super fun. I'm like, I want to bite the other one, but let me try the margarita before know, they I'm get like, too antsy. That margarita looks good. Mm. Cheers. Mm. That's really good. It's a good margarita. It's sweet, not too sweet. It's got a lot of flavor to it. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to have to break this recipe out for... Mm. Taco Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, I mean. Oh yeah, perfect. And if you didn't know, we're filming on a Tuesday, even though you may yes. not be watching this on a Tuesday, but it is Taco Tuesday here in Texas. And so there's no better way to celebrate than with a homemade taco. All right, well, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.